Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Project Egg Show. Today, we have the honor of speaking with John Bezzera, an award-winning personal trainer, having worked with the Hollywood elite for over 30 years. John has lectured at several universities, been the fitness expert for several network marketing companies, plus the fitness expert on Vegas Life TV, The Beauty You Show, and is the host of Who Knows Fitness. John has worked with Warner Brothers, Fox, Universal, and MGM Studios, and has been featured in a ton of different magazines, in addition to being a best-selling author. Wow. John, you've done a lot. I'm impressed already. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you. You can do a lot when you're old like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, uh, I want to jump right in. What is your story? Yeah, you know, it, it, my story is, it, it's a long story. There's 51 plus years of it, but I guess it just goes back to my childhood. You know, I, I was very blessed um, in my upbringing. So, you know, a lot of the things we're programmed with is the things that went into our head as a kid. And my grandfather was kind of my father, you know, my, my mom and dad separated when I was very young. So he was my father and he was the epitome of, you know, hard work, um, starting businesses, you know, working 10 hours a day, just everything he had to do to, you know, he did it for survival. He didn't have the options that a lot of people do it now. And, and that he just programmed that into me, you know, and, you know, go to work early, stay late, work hard, you know, no days off. And, you know, and I'm sure you've read the book, The Secret and all those great things, but he was preaching that stuff to me when I was a little kid. And I don't even think he knew it, but you know, so I was just programmed to work really hard. <laughs> so that's kind of that, that's it in a nutshell, you know, and then it just goes into all the stuff I've been blessed to, to be able to do over the years. What was your relationship like with your grandfather? It, it was, it was, uh, at the time I didn't really, I may, may have uh, took it for granted a little bit, but it was really amazing. You know, it was amazing. I was, he, he had a farm out in central California. He had a junkyard, he had a towing company. I mean, he did it all. And I was just there every second of the day, right at his hip. So I, I learned that hard work was normal. You know, it wasn't something I had to learn as, as I got older. I was doing it when I was five years old. So <laughs> I'm very blessed, but it was, he was an amazing guy. You know, he's been gone a few years, but yeah, he was a good guy. So it seems like he was the type of leader that led by example. Um, were there any other ways that he taught that he instilled those values? You know, for sure, an iron fist, you know, we grew up kind of Southern Baptist. So if you know that, it's like, you know, don't do this, you'll go to hell, you know, I mean, so I mean, there was the fear factor. But at the same time, you know, as um, you know, I'm going to tell a crazy story, okay, I'm going to tell a story I probably shouldn't tell. But when I was in kindergarten, we we're in a town where um, I was a minority. And uh, the first day of school, I kind of got beat up, and I didn't know how to handle it. And my grandpa, you know, took me in the barn and he goes, okay, so that can never happen again. So what we're going to do is we're going to put you in jujitsu and wrestling. And he goes, I'll make sure I pay for it, but you got to show up early, stay late, you learn all that. And, you know, he just didn't want that to happen to me again because it, it devastated me at five years old, first day of school. So, you know, I, I got in martial arts and wrestling very young and I think that also taught, taught me a lot about, you know, discipline and respect and things like that. Um, so he was about, you know, education, even though he was an eighth grade dropout. He had to support 11 siblings when his father got hurt. And he was, I think, 12 years old supporting a family. So, you know, his, his whole thing was, you know, work very hard, you know, learn from the people that's been there before you and treat everybody respectful, you know, and, and I've kind of tried to live my life by doing that, you know. What was your relationship with your parents and how did um, that evolve over time? Well, my mom's, you know, my mom's great. You know, she was a single mom for a long time. So, you know, she worked hard, um, you know, and that took away from some time, like in sports and stuff where she wasn't there. But, you know, she had to do what she had to do. 
uh, my, my father's relationship really was non-existent. Um, I've seen him a handful of times in the last, you know, several years, but not very often. But my stepdad came in the picture at 12 and very lucky to have, you know, him as a role model too. So I, I, I can't, I can't um, blame my parents for anything because I had the greatest upbringing and it's all I knew. But I don't, um, I don't, I don't, you know, d dis, yeah, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't um, look at, look at it, for, take it for granted at all. I mean, I, I live every second very thankful for what I had. What did your childhood smell like? Strawberry fields, because we lived on farms. <laughs> but, you know, it, I don't know. You know, it's funny when you look back at it, at, at this part of my life, I would say it probably smells like roses. But you know how kids are, right? Like, kids have a different personality and different perspective. So everything's a problem when you're a kid. And then when you get to be an adult, you're like, I wish I had those problems again, because they really weren't problems. You know, it's just part of the learning experience. But I, I, again, I just, I love my childhood. You know, I wish everybody could have that childhood. As you were growing up, what were some of those activities that you like to participate in of your own volition? So I was kind of maybe forced into the martial arts thing a little bit. Um, but wrestling I really enjoyed and then later on in life and I was very fortunate enough and again I, I just want to say that there's nothing special about me I'm not a super athlete I'm not genetically gifted I was a small kid so everything that I did is because I had you know the, the, the desire to do it I had a great education I had a good support team and I had a good follow-through so that being said I went on to win three national championships in wrestling when I probably shouldn't have and then later on, I got into BMX racing, which was, I, I loved BMX. It was my own thing that I picked, you know, and I followed my grandpa's advice, you know, learn from the best, practice hard, you know, and just don't give up. And later on in life, at about 17, I got a national championship in BMX. So, you know, my story on, um, you know, the things that I like to do or my upbringing or the success I've had, it's, it's really simple. It's, it's very much like fitness businesses because as long as you have a real, you know, a, a, that desire, a really need, a real want, you know, you really want it. Needs are cool, but needs don't spark as much of an emotional tie as a want. You know, we always talk about our why. So when you, know, when you really want something and you can put a good game plan together and find the people that have done that before you and learn as much as you can. And as long as you don't give up, because success hurts, success is painful. You got to go through pain to get to the end, the end game. And if you can have the you know, tenacity to get through that pain, you're going to have results. You're going to have good results and you're going to have success. So, you know, that was my, uh, the thing I really enjoyed is I really enjoyed the bicycles, you know, and the, and the racing. So it seems like you were this elite athlete growing up. Did that really take up a lot of your time? Like, were you training all the time? Were you hanging out with friends? Like, what was, was it like day to day? I was training all the time. But you keep in mind, I lived on a farm. My friend, I was just talking to my fiance about it. My closest friend was three miles you know, so like training was cool. Like it was something that gave me a release. It kept me, you know, kept, kept me out of trouble my whole life because we all have those crossroads, you know, and I, when we, we relocated later on in life in a uh, kind of expensive town and we lived in um, the lower economical part of town and I saw a lot of bad stuff and, you know, gangs and drugs and violence and the, the sports and all that stuff kept me from going the wrong way. Because, you know, it, when we're a teenager, we're real vulnerable to getting pulled a certain way. And luckily I had that, you know, and I, I, I give credit where credit's due. You know, sports really kept me on the right path. How did participating in those sports and, and accomplishing those incredible feats change or, or help you evolve your identity, your, your view of self? You know, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shy kid. You know, I was probably the kid that went to the beach and kept a shirt on and I wasn't real talkative. So what the sports did is it gave me a self-confidence 
And at the same time, um, you know, I, I'm Italian and, you know, we have hotheads in the family and, you know, there's, there's those times where I catch myself and sports definitely help keep me um, level, level headed, you know? Um, but I mean, yeah, it's just everything that I've done has been every point in my life. I've had something going on where I haven't had time to get off track, <laughs> which is good. You know, I mean, I, I think I kind of answered your question, but tell me if you want me to answer that differently. I was, I get, I get sidetracked quickly. <laughs> I love it. That's what makes for a great conversation. So as you were going from sport to sport, you know, and, and venture to venture, how did you stay so busy and also decide what was the next stepping stone on your path? I think a lot of that even goes back again to my grandfather because he did so many different things. He wasn't in, now my mom had a great job. She was a vice president of a big bank. She had that career, you know, the whole rich dad, poor dad, the, the grandpa was the entrepreneur and my mom was the employee. And, you know, I had the choice to go either direction and I knew I didn't want to do the employee thing, you know? So seeing my grandpa go from business to business and actually running several at a time and being successful, it gave me uh, at least the, the, uh, the knowledge and the, the confidence to know that I didn't have to do just one thing in life, you know, and, and life is short. You know, I, I got to the point turning 51 last year where you kind of look at your life and you go, you know, there's a good possibility I have less years in front of me than I have behind me. So, and it goes fast. I mean, it seems like, I mean, you're a lot younger than me, but it seems like yesterday I was your age, you know, and it just goes so quick. So, um, yeah, I was just never afraid to try new things. So if I saw, saw something that interests me or uh, I had friends doing a certain thing, I wasn't afraid to jump in and try it. And I tried everything. Don't get me wrong. I, I tried everything possible and I usually sucked at all of them. So it took a while to get to the point where I was decent and good and, and better. <laughs> So can you take us through the chronology of those things that you did try? And, I, and I'm really interested from the perspective of what skills did you develop as you went through these different uh, ventures? You know, I, I, think, I think probably the thing that helped me most, I think like um, balance and coordination, you're born with quite a bit of that. You can definitely train to have it, but you're born with a certain degree of it. And that would be like with singers. I mean, you see prodigies that are three years old. So you are born with something. But being in wrestling and martial arts at a very young age, it really took that balance and coordination kind of the next level. And for sure, it really helped. I mean, BMX for sure. I mean, a lot of balance and coordination and explosive strength, um, jujitsu, uh, even bodybuilding. You know, all those things are structural. They're explosive coordinations involved and, and then the mindset. So chronologically, you know, wrestling for sure, then racing, then later on jujitsu, bodybuilding and things like that. They all just kind of, I don't think there was a point where they didn't overlap. So it was like one thing to another to, to this day, really. And so when did you start, or, or I guess uh, go further into your your business life like when did when did the entrepreneurship really start to become a prominent uh, piece of your life yeah that, that's a great question and I have a really distinctive timeline on that so back in the, the 90 mid 90s to mid 2000s I was training everybody and I won't mention their names but I mean big Hollywood stars I had a gym I had a waiting list of clients money was just flowing in for lack of better words. But with that came me working 12, 13, 14 hour days, seven days a week. So, you know, we, we talk about network marketing. It's a big thing. And, and I do love that business. And I kept getting people saying, Hey, you got to come to this meeting. Got to try this for a long time. I mean, probably 10 years, I got people trying to get me to go to this meeting or try this product. And then in 2008, um, one of my clients, uh, I'm really close to this, this family, and I decided I would try their product. And it was, uh, it was a high-ticket item. It was a you know, water-based system. And 
um, I, I really liked it, you know, and I wanted the, the system for myself. I didn't want anything to do with the business because it was a pyramid scheme and, you know, all that bad stuff you hear. That's a, completely what I thought, you know, because that's what you hear. And then I kind of just, you know, watched what they were doing using the product. And then I decided to try it on some of my clients and they just had really great results. So I, I won't mention the name of the company. It was a big international company. And then I got involved in it and somehow I just, I, you know, I don't want to think I'm a good salesman at all, but I, I do care about people. And if you do care about people and you really lead the love for people, there's an old saying, uh, love people and use money. And if you have that attitude, it seems to really work better than trying to sell somebody something. So I actually became a top earner in that company in my first seven months and then it was a very high ticket item. And then, you know, in 2008, we had the whole real estate market crash. And, you know, I had a beautiful ocean view house in Ventura, California. That's where I kind of grew up later on in life. And you know, that went away really quick. No one was paying, you know, $100 an hour for a training. No one was paying $4,000 for the system. So I relocated out to Vegas. And I was, I don't know if you know, but I was doing uh, the TV show Sons of Anarchy. I was an actor on that for a few seasons and it at least got me it was a bridge you know it got me from you know the high expenses I had relocating to Vegas and it got me here and settled and then another product came about two years later and another great product I liked and it was doing a lot for people and I got to be top earner in that company and I'm still working with that company today but um, that was the timeline you know it was a time where it wasn't a side thing, I needed it, you know, and it just happened to happen at the right time and the right people around me and I learned from the right people and, you know, that's network marketing. There's highs and lows, but I, I really love the business. It really um, is a good marriage for my fitness business. They kind of go cohesively together. So it seems like in both of the, the journeys into, into these products, both of the products, you became a top earner in both of them. That's yes. incredible. But you know, it, it's the same as the, the fitness. It's the same exact thing. It's the same formula. It's learning from the best, finding a product you can be passionate about, not giving up, just trying really hard. It's the same formula, you know? And if you put the time in and you have the smile on your face and the right heart, you're going to have success. It's just, as, as humans, our, our expectations are different than reality a lot of times because you get into network marketing and you hear a person that probably just signed up filling your head with all these wild things and they're not making the money, but they know someone that's someone that's someone that's, you know, down the line and there's a lot of false promises, you know. So I believe, you know, when you get into something like this, you tell people very honestly, it's a great business, it's changed I mean, there's more, I think there's more millionaires in network marketing than pro sports, real estate, and the music industry, believe it or not, overall. So, I mean, that's pretty incredible. But for the same, then the same conversation, a lot of people get in and never make a penny. So, it's just like my sports. If you get in and you go to practice and go home and don't do things on your own and try to take it to the next level, you're not going to have success. It's not easy. But for the people that want it and really feel passionate about it, everybody can have success. You don't, you don't have to have an education. You don't have to have approval from your friends and family. You just have to really want it and try. So what would you say are like the, the skills, like tactically, that helped you to be so successful in, in these companies and, and in your in your fitness business as an actor, like, are there any skills that you can point to? Cause I mean, it seems like one of the recurring themes is very hard work, a lot of discipline and an unwillingness to quit. Yeah. But you know, I mean, are there any tactical skills that you have deployed to, to achieve the success that you have? I would say yes. And, and probably the biggest thing is um, like I just, every single person I see through the day, whether I know them or I not, or if they have a frown on their face or they seem angry, I say hi to everybody. I smile at them. I'll bring up conversations and I never ever throw my product or service or what I do in their face. 
you know, I try to uh, create dialogue with people and, you know, social media is a big thing now. And I have, uh, you've heard of the book, how to win friends and influence people. Yeah, it's a great, this yeah, you book. have, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, I mean, that book is so amazing with just learning to communicate with people and how to take a situation that may be uh, an aggressive situation and, and getting them on your side, you know? And it's not like, and the title's misleading. It sounds like you're trying to hypnotize someone into doing something you want them to do. And that's really not what it's about. It's about learning to communicate with somebody and understanding maybe where they're at in their shoes and looking at it from both sides and then kind of meeting in the middle. So I, that book's helped a lot, me to hone in the network marketing part. But the best thing is just communicating and, and creating a dialogue with people. There's no, in network marketing, a lot of people won't see somebody they've known for 10 years and they'll message them on social media and say, hey, hope you're good. I got this opportunity. We'll look at it. Wrong. Like, that's too much. You know, how about, hey, how you been? I haven't talked to you in a long time. What's been going on? What about getting to know the person again and see what's going on in their life? If the opportunity's there, it's going to present itself to you. At some point, they're going to say, most likely, it happens most likely, you know, I have several kids, I don't have enough time with them, time's always an issue, or how often have we had have a friend or a relative that hates their job? More often than not, right? So after you get to create that dialogue and get to know the person again, you know, empathize with them and say, you know, if you're ever looking for something else, I've been pretty successful in this, you know, I'd love to help you, you know, and just start there. You know, I don't send your website link to somebody. I mean, there's, I'm saying it may work for some people, but for me, I need to create that relationship. You know, I need them to know that I care about them. I'm not a sales guy. You know, I like having friends all over the world. It's great. You know, and so it's just that creating a dialogue, treating people good. And then people are going to want, they see you happy. They see a smile on your face. They see the success around you. They're going to want to know what you do. So just positive, positive, positive. So it seems like the key here or one of the keys is dealing with people and, and people skills and building relationships with others. hundred percent. I mean, that, I mean, how, how often have we heard those stories about, you know, some, the, like a CEO to a big company, they probably didn't go to college to get a degree, degree to get that part. They knew somebody. There was connections there. So you never know who that person is going to be. I, I got a really interesting story. I was at a, when I first moved here, I was at a pub waiting for a friend. And I'm talking to this guy, and he was from Abu Dhabi, okay? And, you know, he was telling me he's uh, the heir to the throne and this and that. And we were talking and creating this friendship and just, you know, making fun of guys hitting on. I mean, it was just this really weird little situation. He tells me he's like the throne, heir, heir to the throne. I thought he was crazy because it's Vegas, right? Sure enough, he leaves, you know, give me his contact number. I Google him and say, heir to the throne. <laughs> like, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know why that one smile or hello might turn into something big. But yeah, relationships are everything. So one of the things, and it's interesting that you used the word connection at, at one point. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm fascinated by the idea of connection and, and building relationships and you know, I, I love talking about it. It gets me really excited. Um, but one of the things I, I really interested in, in knowing is your philosophy on building deep, meaningful, and genuine human connection. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I wish that everybody you met you could have that with. But unfortunately, there's a lot of roadblocks put in the way that that kind of eliminate that from happening. So, you know, uh, the older I get, I know I got to choose my inner circle carefully because you never really know what another person's agenda is, but it takes time, you know? Like if you've been friends with somebody for three, four, five, ten 10 years, and it's just always been solid, you know, you've been ups and downs together and they never tried to get anything from you. The people that, that always offer their help, they always offer their shoulder to cry on, you know, their advice, those are the friends you want. 
you know, and if you can get a friendship where that's equal and it's coming, you know, at a force together, those are the deep relationships. Those are the things that can turn into that, you know, you're there for each other's funerals, so to speak, but it, it, it's, it's sad that we can't develop that with everybody, but it's just, you know, unfortunately we all have different perspectives. We all have different views. The one thing I try to never do is I don't talk about politics. I don't talk about religion. I have my beliefs, but a lot of times when your beliefs don't match another beliefs, there's conflict. So I just personally choose in my personal life and my business life. Let's just, let's just agree to not, not agree or not to talk about it. I choose not to watch a lot of news because of all the negative stuff, you know, so relationships are the meaning of life, I think, but you do have to be cautious because it is an unusual world. It's a scary world. It's interesting that you mentioned how you have a, a close knit group and you keep that relatively small because I was literally thinking like, man, I really want to, I really want to know how do you, you know, as a business person, somebody who's talking to everybody, building relationships constantly, how do you choose, okay, this person's going to come into my inner circle. This person's not. Oh, well, first of all, let me, let me ask you that. How do you, how do you choose that? Well, I, I really, I don't think I do the choosing. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I choose. I think those people choose to come in. You know, and obviously you have to have that. I mean, you, you know how it is. Don't you like sometimes when you meet someone, you just know right away if you click with that person. I mean, that's always the first step. You got to have that chemistry and, you know, you got to enjoy the conversation. So, you know, just nothing awkward. But I think more, more often than not, people choose to either come in the group or not. You know, I, I don't think that I'm choosing. It's not some secret society. I'm not like, choosing people. But, you know, it had, has to have that connection. You know, you have to. Uh, you are who you hang out with too. You got to be cautious with that. So, you know, my grandpa used to say, you're only as strong as the weakest uh, horse in the team. So, you know, you need to make sure if you have an agenda, if you have a goal that you're surrounded with people that are, are going to lift you up and not bring you down. And a lot of times with family, we can't really choose that. And you got to deal with, you know, negative with positive, but it gets in your head, man. You know, it gets in your head. So you got to be cautious the information that goes in your head. When you're managing all of your relationships or, or maybe, uh, maybe managing is not the right word, but when you're taking into consideration all of your relationships and, and your connections, do you have any sort of system of like follow up to where, you know, you put some, you meet somebody, you put it in a calendar. Okay. Six months from now, I'm definitely going to yeah. reach out if it's been that long. I mean, how do you, how do you like how, you're building an ever increasing network? How do you maintain all those relationships? You know, it, it uh, you cut out just a little bit. I got, I heard maintain the relationships. I didn't hear what you said after that. Yeah, that, that was a question. How do you maintain all of those relationships? Um, you know, you do the best you can because I've had or my organizations reached over 15,000 people. So you can only, you can't communicate with 15,000 people one-on-one, -on -one, but you can do, um, uh, you know what, I'm going to give me one second. The computer's going to die. Let me plug in real quick. Sorry. All good. All good. All right, here we go. Not like being prepared is one of my fortes, but you know, when you get to large organizations and I want to think that everybody, you know, we've traveled to countries and on trips and, you know, conventions and get togethers and regional events and hung out a lot, but you know, we do weekly um, uh, meetings. We do Facebook live. Uh, we do smaller groups. I travel a lot to groups, but when you get a large organization, and as, as much as you want to, you can only spread yourself so thin. So then you really have to rely more on getting people on groups, you know, Zoom calls, um, Skype, whatever it may be. Um, and then, again, you, you're going to have the people that, are, that surround you that's in your day-to-day -day life and the people that maybe are really close. Like I have a daughter and granddaughter, so it's a text message a day to them and hi, mom. But 
it's tough when you get big organizations. So you just got to do the best you can. And, and, you know, when people reach out to you, you know, get back as quick as you can. If you can't get back quickly, when you do get back, you know, first thing you got to do is say, Hey, I'm really sorry. I apologize. It took me a long time. You know, you have my attention now. So it does get, it does get hard when you have big organizations and it's one of the struggles for sure. So as a, as a gentleman of your caliber, do you find that you're striving to build relationships with people who are like ridiculously successful? Like, are you, are you intentional about who you're going out to build relationships with? Like, or, or like how, how do you focus on the next person? No, I, I don't care. I don't care where you're at in your life. I mean, it's nice to have those mentors that have been on the path that you're trying to go to. But I don't care where you're at in life. If you, you know, if you have a good heart and a desire, we're friends. And I really like helping younger people because at least I've been down that road. You know what I mean? Like, I can't tell you what 50 to 60 and above is. I can't tell you that. But I can tell you what under 50 was like. And I can tell you the mistakes I made. So if I don't have uh, good advice on what to do, I bet you I have good advice what not to do. <laughs> So we've talked a bit about how you've gotten to where you are now, um, but can you take a few minutes and really brag on yourself a little bit and tell us like how how much have you actually accomplished? Because looking from the outside in, we can only see so much, and only you know the height to which you've climbed. So, you know, like how big have you grown this? Uh. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, it depends on what you consider success because to, you know, John Bezos and, and Bill Gates, I'm probably, I have no success. I mean, it just depends on what you consider success. My thing is just, again, just whatever I'm focused on, I want to be the best I can be at it. I'm not trying to beat anybody, but I want to do, I want to see how far I can take it. Um, and I've had that mentality pretty much in everything I've ever started. And I've been financially, I've been very successful. Like in the two thousands was ridiculous. Um, I guess I was well into the millions and then that went away overnight because a lot of it was tied up in real estate. So it was rebuilding, but I I'm fortunate enough to have had that roadmap that worked before. And I guess right now I'm rebuilding. I mean, you know, life's good and we got a nice house and we're engaged and all that. But, you know, you're always trying, if you don't rebuild stronger and if you don't succeed and you are leading a team, they need, you know, what example do they have? So you do have to try to go as high as you can and see how many people you can take with you. And really that's success. As many people as you can help at the end of the day, that's more important than money because you'll, you know, money comes and goes, you can get money back, you can lose money, whatever. But those relationships and the people you've helped, those people are eternally grateful. So it all works out in the end. But as far as my success, I, I, I mean, you said what I've done in the past, and I don't want, like, I'm, I'm a normal guy that works hard. That's it. What's your biggest focus right now? Um, you know, a couple of things. Uh, me and my fiance just signed. Uh, the agreement for our wedding, we're going to have it in Hawaii in about a year from now. So we're planning all that stuff and, you know, he's got pictures taken and all that. So, I mean, that's a big focus. I just transitioned my one-on-one -on -one training business to online, which is, and obviously by how long it took me to get on this call, you can see my technical skills <laughs> aren't that great. So that's what I'm doing, transitioning on my, my online because I love helping people and I figured... I'm kind of behind on get doing the online thing because I can help as many people that needs me instead of just that local community. Um, and then our network marketing company, we just uh, merged with another company and kind of pre relaunching. And one of my big things that uh, as far as supplements and things like that, I'm not a huge supplement pusher, but there's certain things I think our body needs and antioxidants are big. Hydration's big. And the biggest thing I've seen that because it worked for my mother actually was the CBD oil changed her life. So we've been pushing to get that um, for several months. And part of that process was it literally has to be the best. So, I mean, we 
did all, did dual diligence and not just researching online. We got with formulators and then from the formulators, we went all the way to the growers and we learned the process and we learned what people are doing to cut costs and we didn't want to do that. So one of the big, big things right now is launching that product. So I think um, I'm not a big pharmaceutical fan. You know, I'm, I like natural stuff and I mean, it's just kind of my passion. So if I can get stuff at someone's hands, it's going to change our life and 2%, then that's a big focus. So that's really kind of the three biggest things right now. What's your greatest theory? My greatest theory? I really believe that, you know, I'm not going to talk about putting stuff out in the universe, but I'll get real simple and just say, however you treat people, you're going to get that back. And I 100% know that's happened in my life. So, I mean, that theory, I mean, you know, it goes into the, to the um, book, The Secret and Manifestation, but, and, and even in religion, you know, it's, if you read between the lines, you know, treat people good, you know, regardless of the situation, treat people good. And, you know, you'll get that back in tenfold. So, John, I want to thank you so much and uh you know i'm very appreciative of the time that that we've been able to share together and uh you know i, I just have a few more questions for you and then uh then we'll wrap it on up Sounds good. And pleasure's all mine by the way um is there anything about yourself that you think is an important part of who you are that we didn't talk about today in other words what did i miss um i think uh maybe fear I have a lot of fear and my fear is, sorry, do what? Yeah, yeah, please. sorry, we got, bar, we got barbecue going too bad you're not here. <laughs> but fear and my fear is, I'm not fearful for anything that could happen to me. I'm fearful for letting my friends and family down. And I think that fear is a good source of fuel to make me work hard. But um, yeah, fear, fear, is, uh, fear can be a good thing. So I'm 24. I have a couple businesses and, uh, you know, I say this all the time and I still mean it. This show is my greatest passion. Mm -hmm. um, what question should I be asking somebody with your experience, with your talents, with your gifts, with your genius that I just wouldn't think to ask? And that's the greatest question I think anybody's ever asked me. Um, you know, the obvious, you know, you're going to ask, uh, people that have been down that road, you're going to ask, you know, what their secret is. Um, and you know, if you're 24, have this show and have two businesses, there's really no secret, you know, first of all, um, you know, ask them, this is what I would ask. This is what I've asked other people. I've asked people. Compare 10 years ago to, for you, 10 years ago to 10 years in the future. And then tell me how that looks. Because you can see someone that's had success. Usually they can be a billionaire. And then that 10 years in the future is amplified by, you know, changing the world. So, I mean, that's a, that's a question I would probably ask. Um, but, at, you know, just, I would say, you know, what did 10 years ago look, look, look like for you versus 10 years in the future? Because you're going to get the same old answers, hard work, passion, determination, relationships, tenacity, all that stuff. And that's absolutely part of the puzzle. But vision, you know, is a little bit different. How big do you think that you can go? You're 24. That's amazing. You're actually younger than my daughter. But, you know, for at 24, I wasn't put together as much as you. I was trying to figure stuff out. So, you know, look for those people and ask them what their future looks like. Because we know they've got the success now, but what's their future look like? Would you be comfortable answering that question? Um, I think so. You know, my, my future in 10 years is to be able to, um, you know, as far as financially generate, you know, an online business. 
my network marketing business will be successful and running itself in the residual income I'm comfortable with. But to be able to spend a lot more time with my family, um, more than that obligatory one week a year vacation, that's, that's, my, that's my future. My future is to be able to help a lot of people, but still have that freedom back where I can spend it with my family. I don't want to lose the time. Cause I, like I told you, my mom worked hard and she was, you know, working a lot of jobs as I was growing up. I want to be able to put all that back together and change the, the legacy of my family. Well, John, thank you again so much for coming on the show and, and sharing all that you have. I truly no, pleasure is all mine. I appreciate you because you had the best questions out of anybody I've ever interviewed with. Well, thank you very much. That really means a lot. Thank and, you. Uh, to everybody who's listening, I want to thank y'all listening, watching. I want to thank y'all very much, guys and gals. Y'all are the best. Y'all are the reason that I do this. And I want to thank you for the support and, uh, you know, sticking with us all the way till the end. I love you guys and gals. So thank y'all very much. You want to wrap us up? Yep. Thank you guys. Uh, coming to you from Las Vegas, man. What a great day. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your family. Tell them that you appreciate them and move forward. All Good right, night. party. Let's change the world. All right, bye-bye.